Republic in Abuja. Road infrastructure anywhere in the world constitute an integral part of the development process, opening up areas of critical economic value and providing the much needed campus for networking and accessing crucial social demands and enhancement of security for the overall well-being of man and his environment. Tonight, Weekend Fire will be extraying the huge financial investments of the federal government in the fulfillment of these human aspirations with specific gains across the geopolitical spread of the country. With increased budgetary allocations and foreign debt interventions to yield positive results, today all the trunk air roads initiated by successive administrations are either delivered or put to use or at the verge of completion. This is in addition to more road projects across the length and breadth of Nigeria, as hundreds of kilometers of roads, highways and bridges reconstructed or rehabilitated have been opened up for use to commuters, while many orders are on the verge of being delivered, including the gigantic second Niger Bridge at 80% completion. The good news, however, is all these are coming on the heels of the annual mass travel from different parts of the country to celebrate the festive season. Now, to give us a breakdown of facts and figures and journey so far is the Director General, Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology, Zaria, Bayaro Sali Farah, will be joining me in the studio as we discuss update on construction of strategic federal government road projects. But this will be after the news. I am Juma Yeso. Thanks for joining us. The federal government is committed to improving the nation's economy through the 2021 to 2025 medium term strategic national development plan aimed at accelerating growth and economic sustainability. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo stated this at a policy dialogue engagement with stakeholders in Lagos. Abolade Salami reports. The Nigerian economy recorded a year on year growth of 5.01% in second quarter of 2021 after a negative growth of 6.10% in second quarter of 2020 as a result of the devastating effect of the global pandemic. While in third quarter of 2021, the real GDP growth rate stood at 4.03% year on year. In an effort to pull out the economy from the red lines and set it on the path of recovery, the federal government through various policies aimed at economic growth initiated the 2.3 trillion naira economic sustainability plan to support vulnerable sectors and create jobs. We introduced what is called the Jubilee Fellowship Program. Now this is a one-year work placement program for 20,000 young Nigerians and it will kick off in January. Every year we'll have 20,000 young Nigerians who are placed in the private sector and public sector and they are paid by a special grant. While the government is working as seriously to retain a positive economic outlook, in the macroeconomic sector to encourage investment opportunity, regular dialogue with stakeholders and policy formulation was noted as key to sustainable economic growth. It is a choice we have to make by pulling up our bootstraps and synergies as a team that is willing to earn its position among the global committee of nations. The implementation of the medium term plan is expected to be sustained by the fiscal and monetary measure to boost productivity. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. The federal government's declaration of bandit groups operating in Nigeria as terrorists has been described as a welcome development. A legal practitioner, Yunus Ustaz San, said the move will give the military the opportunity to keep the activities of the groups in check. Yunus Ustaz is of the view that the development will allow the Nigerian armed forces to tackle terrorists with a core equal force to save Nigerians from the claws of terrorists. The bandits, the Boko Harams and, and so on qualify as terror, terrorists, even under the United Nations and international law. And the Attorney General, to my satisfaction, followed this step one by one. And I am so happy that they have declared this group a terrorist group because if you don't declare them like that they, 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 there is the qualification to the amount of force you can use on them but once they are so declared you can use any force any force that will prevent them from continuing their terrorist uh, attack 
detail on security, Zamfor State Police Command has arrested 10 suspected armed bandit collaborators, including a 30-year-old married woman who allegedly specializes in supplying arms and ammunition to bandits. The State Commission of Police, Ayuba Elkana, paraded the suspects along with some exhibits at the State Police Command headquarters. Kuso, Haliru Muhammad Umar has more. The suspects arrested for various crimes bordering on criminal conspiracy, armed banditry, kidnapping, cattle rustling, illegal possession of firearms, and aiding banditry in Zafra and neighboring states were also found in possession of 10 AK-47 rifles and rounds of live ammunition, among several other exhibits. Police on tactical operation in the state arrested one Fatima Lawadi F, a native of Ghana, the modern local government area, Suspect was arrested with 991 rounds of AK-47 ammunition to be delivered to a notorious bandit king to call Ado Alero. CP Ayuba Elkana also announced the arrest of a supply of hard drugs to bandits and a suspected rapist of a four-year-old girl. Upon interrogation, suspect confessed that prior to his arrest by the police, himself, Lawali Neka, and Almeria conspired and went to Wanke village in Kusau local government area with over 100 operational motorcycles where they wrestled over 240 cows belonging to different individuals. The Commissioner of Police noted that the success recorded followed several operations conducted at different bandits' enclaves by a police tactical team deployed to the state from the force headquarters working in collaboration with operatives in the state, which led to serious gun battle with bandits, where unspecified number of them got fatally injured, while many others escaped with several gun shots. In Gusau, Hallir Muhammad Umar, NTA News. Security operatives in Kaduna have neutralized a suspected bandit and arrested an accomplice who were allegedly among kidnapped syndicate terrorizing travelers along Kaduna Abuja Highway. A statement by spokesperson Kaduna State Police Command ASP Mohammed Jaligi says, acting on credible intelligence, the police in collaboration with the operatives of Federal Intelligence Bureau and Special Tactical Squad Force Headquarters Abuja raided a facility in Sabon Tasha, Kaduna where a report of suspected bandits were said to have been lodged. After an extensive search of the scene, the operatives recovered one AK-47 rifle loaded with 23 rounds of live ammunition, 14 expendent shells of the ammunition, and one boxer motorcycle. The owner of the facility has been arrested for questioning. Now to health matters, the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 says Nigeria has scaled up surveillance to mitigate any risks of importation of the new COVID-19 variant named Omicron, discovered in South Africa and its neighboring countries. Head of Technical Secretariat of the PSC, Dr. Mukhtar Mohammed, in an interview with correspondent Mitere Ikpen, however, notes that Nigeria will not impose travel restrictions until it is absolutely necessary. The emergence of a new coronavirus variant, Omicron, already detected in South Africa, Botswana, Hong Kong, and Belgium, is generating concerns around the world. The World Health Organization and health experts are worried that the new coronavirus mutant might be more transmissible than the Delta variant with increased risk of mortality. The UK has swiftly imposed travel restrictions on South Africa and five other African countries, but Nigerian authorities say the situation is still being monitored. This variant occurred in a community that is largely unvaccinated um, in South Africa. And what normally happens is that when people are unvaccinated for a long time, the virus will find a good resting place um, in such individuals. There are over 70 cases that have been detected. Uh, this mutant is causing um, concern to the scientific community because it has more mutations that has ever been seen in any of the previous uh, mutants. It's likely that this mutant can transmit fast uh, in the population, so we'll need to monitor that. And As the Nigerian South Africa Binational Commission meetings hold in Abuja, the PSC says there is no cause for panic as standard surveillance is in place.
Nigerians are advised to visit designated vaccination centers and get vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to reduce the possibility of mutation of the virus into more deadly variants. In Abuja, Mitaire Ikbeng, NTA News. Nigerian banks are being mobilized and encouraged to drive economic growth through support for individuals and corporate organizations. Managing Director Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, Bello Hassan, set of these at the annual meeting with editors held in Lagos. Samuel Johnson reports. With the activities and policies put in place by the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, the rate of bank failure and losses arising from it have reduced to a large extent. Managing Director of NDIC, Bello Hassan, explained that strong and effective prudential regulation also assisted in strengthening the open bank assistance and the bridge bank arrangements to minimize risk and losses. He said this has also saved over 12,000 jobs while 8.3 billion Naira was paid to 443,946 insecured depositors and 3 billion Naira paid to depositors of microfinance banks. Despite the challenges we are facing posed by COVID-19 pandemic, the banking system is still safe and sound, looking at the key financial soundness indicators that measure stability within the system. I'm talking about the capital adequacy, the, the uh, quality of assets, the earnings performance, the liquidity ratio. They are all above the prudential limit. President of the Nigerian Guild of Editors noted that NDIC has instilled discipline in banking operations and protecting depositors and investors. We are the business of informing people. So if you are not well informed yourself, you cannot inform people correctly. That is why we strive to get more information from the ADIC. We want to know how they are doing their job. We want to know the health of our banking industry. We want to know what they have in place to ensure that things don't go wrong. Editors from broadcast and print media attended the event. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. Cross River State Governor Professor Ben Ayade is advocating stronger relations with the United Kingdom and the state to promote prosperity, enhance security, tackle climate change and energy issues, among others. The governor made the advocacy during the visit of British Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria, Gil Atkinson, in Calabar. In 1960, Nigeria gained her independence from the colonial shackles of Britain, and this common history shared by both countries is one of the reasons for their strong ties. The visit of the British Deputy High Commissioner presents an opportunity for the Cross River State Governor to reiterate his industrialization policy, appeal for technical assistance, solicit for the introduction of instruments to alleviate poverty, and open other means of collaboration between the two countries with special interests in Cross River State. So all the way from here up to Adamawa, you can walk into Nigeria from Cameroon. But that portion of us is particularly terrible. And now they are recruiting young men from Crossover. People come from other parts of Nigeria into Calabar. They get recruited and trained and paid $100 a week to go as freedom fighters. We've managed about 24 hours and in that time already had an opportunity to really see and feel the history of the relationship between Calabar and the United Kingdom. Not always an easy or comfortable history, but a deep one and a one which still matters greatly to the United Kingdom. Cross River State has a record of 58% forest cover in Nigeria. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NGA News. Eliminating financial and social barriers remain the solution to women inclusion in governance and economy. This was the position of Deputy Governor of Kaduna State, Hadiza Sabwa Balarabi, at the Nigeria Outlook Women Business Summit. Elizabeth Omuri reports. This is a convergence of business women and actors in the finance sector to brainstorm, identify and cover gaps in businesses. 
It is also to tackle some of the challenges confronting women in business and expose them to opportunities of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Last year, the federal government reserved 60% of the 229 billion earmark for micro, small and medium enterprise development as a fund for women entrepreneurs. The Central Bank of Nigeria has produced a framework for advancing women's financial inclusion in Nigeria. All these monies in the banks, please let us use it to develop our women, to bring more development to the nation. Different sessions reinforced the need for financial empowerment of women to make them economically independent. The benefits of women empowerment are numerous and include attainment of specific aspects of the sustainable development goals. We want to see an Africa that is being driven by its own people. And we want to see our women leading in these particular directions. Women and girls' protection, reproductive and mental health are other issues that featured at the summit. Elizabeth Omori, NT News. The global community is evolving in the adoption of technology to solve diverse challenges with the goal of simplifying cargo delivery. Actualizing this mandate is key to the Council for the Regulation of Freight Forwarding in Nigeria, with the graduation of 400 individuals. Imoleo Tokede Ogunfowara reports. By the authority of the Council, I deliver on the new law. These are the 400 graduates who have completed training under 16 accredited tertiary institutions in the country. They now have national diploma and higher national diploma in freight forwarding and supply chain management. The registrar, Council for the Regulation of Freight Forwarding in Nigeria, said the course was initiated by the federal government to weed out non-professionals practicing the business of freight forwarding and supply chain management within Nigerian ports. As a council, we urge practitioners to embrace information technology and continuously seek the knowledge. The council, established by Act No. 16, 2007, is charged with, amongst other responsibilities, the regulation and control of the practice of freight forwarding in Nigeria to promote the profession to the highest standards of competence. This singular effort will not only enhance professionalism in the industry, it will at the same time contribute to enhance revenue generation profile uh, of the nation. I want to call on all related agencies the CRFFN to succeed because when they succeed, the economy of Nigeria will succeed. Awards were presented to outstanding individuals who have contributed to the growth of the industry. This is one of my dreams and I'm looking forward for a greater height. The executive certificate courses are in line with the council's mission of providing training, educating, and professionalizing freight forwarders with the right tools and knowledge to meet international best practices as regards trade facilitation. In Lagos, Imoliayo Tukidi Ogunfuwera, NTA News. President Muhammadu Buhari rejoices with major indigenous player in the oil and gas industry, Lee Engineering Construction Company Limited, as it marks 30 years of its establishment. The president, in a statement by his media advisor, Femi Adishino, greets the chairman of the group, Dr. Lemon Ikbea, the management and staff, as they celebrate the milestone. He salutes the commitment and resourcefulness of the group, which undertakes a key project in the oil and gas industry that used to be the exclusive preserve of multinational companies. President Buhari particularly commended the foresight, wisdom, and doggedness of the group president for standing tall among his peers in the oil and gas, as well as in the construction industry. President Buhari wishes Lee Engineering Group greater successes, urging it to ensure that local content remains a focal area where providing jobs for teaming, while providing jobs for teaming Nigerians. President Muhammadu Buhari joins family and friends in celebrating with veteran journalists 
Fonu Olamiti on his 70th birthday, congratulating the renowned editor, columnist, and media consultant for his dedication, for dedicating his time to serve the nation and humanity. The president, in a statement, rejoices with the journalist and his professional colleagues in the Nigerian Union of Journalists and Nigerian Guild of Editors on the milestone, believing that Olamiti, who started his career with the Nigerian Tribune, has over the years shown depth courage and empathy in his work. He praised that Olatimi, who is a fellow of Nigerian Guild of Editors and Media Consultant to Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, will live in good health and enjoy longer life. This is NTA Weekend File. We'll take a break now. When we return, our discussion on update on construction of strategic federal government road projects will begin. Do stay. Everybody knows the secret to good cooking is that special ingredient. The mothers know it. But does this new generation know it? Let's find out. Mothers, daughters, are you ready? Yeah. Let the cooking begin. Every store tomato paste. Ladies and gentlemen, food is ready. Food of love. Mmm. Good food for the body. Mm. Yum, yum. A Risco Regical Inc. Najiko Tomato Paste is made by a Risco Foods Limited. Feeding Africans with healthy foods. Don't wait for life. You go to meet life. It's not about how many chances you get. It's what you do with what you've got. Cup after cup. Morning after morning. Start strong. Finish strong. It all starts with a Nescafe. There is a saying that Christmas is what you make of it. At Bed Made Furniture, we enjoy making your Christmas comfortable and exciting with the furniture we provide you. That's why from 1st November to 18 December 2021, Bed Maids offers you and your loved ones amazing luxury furniture your home loves and truly needs at up to 70% discount. You also stand a chance to win fridges, TVs, washing machines and many more as we keep making your living better through the furniture you love. How to make a perfect bowl of love? A perfect blend of taste that brings every ingredient to life. The fusion of different spices. The unique aroma that rejuvenates your senses. The heartwarming deliciousness. And the satisfaction that comes from every bite, which makes you say, hmm, I love my Indomie. Give your kids winning energy. Milo Active Go. With the goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa, helps them make the most of every day. Milo, the energy to go further. Did you hear the super exciting news? What have you heard? Go TV is going super. Are you serious? Bringing new channels with super awesome novellas, super duper kid shows, All right. and super slamming WWE 24 7. All at the super cool price of 5,500 naira. Good. Get Go TV's brand new package Go TV Super. You're welcome back. And before you get to meet my guest, we have correspondent reports. Let's take it. The federal government's commitment to rehabilitate federal roads across Nigeria and Lagos being the commercial hub of the country is fast becoming a reality. This is sequel to the completion of the 127-kilometer lagos Ibadan Expressway, which government says will be delivered in 2022. The completion of the 35 kilometers Apapa Oshodi Oworon Shoki Expressway to link Lagos Ibadan Expressway is being received with jubilation by residents in the area. Before the intervention of the federal government through the Ministry of Works and Housing, the road was in a deplorable state. Traffic, 
nowadays it's all, it's all comparable with the one before. You can see everywhere the road is, the traffic is moving. Now going to Oshodi from here, it's seamless, unlike before now. Apart from the ease of traffic on the road, the project has created more than 600 direct jobs and over 1,000 indirect jobs. The 43.6 kilometers Ojota Lagos to Shagamu interchange is also nearing completion. Considering the economic importance of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, which serves as a gateway to other states in the country, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, within the last one year, has inspected the project six times. Everything is almost done. Uh, we are mandated by the president that this road must be finished next year, so we should be out of here next year fully completed. We have achieved uh, about 39 kilometers up to Wearing Course. So the major outstanding work we have there is the completion of a one number interchange and two number uh, flyover along the road. And there is no um, anything that will delay. It is expected that the completion of the Lagos Ibadan Road project will bring about seamless vehicular movement of goods and persons in and out of Lagos, thereby promoting economic linkages with other parts of Nigeria. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. The ongoing construction of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is an, at an advanced stage. This is in compliance with the directive of President Muhammad Buhari that the work be intensified towards ensuring completion early in 2022. Shola Wahid has an update. Construction of the 127.6 kilometer Lagos Ibadan Draft Carriageway under the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, PIDF, is nearing completion with work done at almost 70% to be completed by 22nd of May, 2022. Controller of works handling some portions of the road explained that impediments such as trecklessness of commuters and frequent accidents are some issues that arise on a daily basis. Because of our diversions in some cases, we sometimes experience traffic jams. But of course, the contractor has a traffic management team and we are also working with road safety and the police, also with the state government and um, traffic team, Trace. So we are usually always able to dissolve the traffic. Some travelers on the road appreciated efforts of the federal government and requested for speedy construction of the project. The challenge is all about the odor we usually encounter by weekend. And I think it's due to the ongoing construction. As the construction of the road nears completion, road users are urged to be more careful by reducing their speeds, obeying all road signs, and maintaining their vehicles to be roadworthy to avoid accidents. In the Badashwad Lawahid, NTA News. The ongoing construction work at the second Niger Bridge has reached advanced stage. Austin Edemadu brings us the latest on the project and its socio-economic impact. The existing Niger Bridge, a magnificent infrastructure that has over the decades bridged the socio-economic gap from the northern to the southern region of the country. The increasing volume of vehicular traffic on the bridge results in loss of man hours and setback to the free flow of goods and services. People consider the amount of time you spend along the road because of traffic, at times you spend three, four hours just to get from us about nature. So it discourages people. On a risky mission is the second Niger Bridge under construction, an iconic infrastructure of national integration and regional connectivity to further advance the economy of the eastern region and beyond. So the socioeconomic importance of it will boost, in fact, it will almost double the GDP of the two regions in the country, the southwest and the southeast. The controller of works, Anambra State, Adeyemo Ajani, says 1.5 kilometers of the entire 1.6 kilometers of the main bridge has been achieved. The dismantling of the launching yard is in progress for the linking of the bridge to the access routes on both Asaba and Onisha axes. So the remaining 90 meters to link together. So, but after this, we still have finishing, like the parapet, the surfacing, you know, lightings and every other thing to put in place. We can walk across. From the Asaba end, the access road stretching three kilometers has been completed. 
the system bootstore plaza and other ancillary buildings and facilities are at advanced stages of completion. The volume of traffic at the Obosi interchange stems from the ongoing construction work, which is being hastened to ensure that commuters in no distant time enjoy free flow of traffic. From all indications, there are a high level of optimism that the 2022 delivery target of the entire Second Niger Bridge will be a dream come true. I'm Austin Edemodo, NTA News. And joining me in the studio to discuss the update on construction of strategic federal government road projects is the Director General, Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology, Zaria Bayaru Sali Fari Fara. You know, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for, for having it's me. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Yes. Federal roads is estimated to be around 35,000 kilometers and about 18% of the road network, whole network in Nigeria. Give us an overview of how these roads have been rehabilitated, refurbished, and open up for computers. Just an overview briefly before we go in depth. Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, like you said, the federal roads are about 35,000 kilometers. Um, that is uh, part of the 230 kilometers um, road network in the country. Uh, recently, this administration has done so much in rehabilitation of federal roads. Most of the key corridors linking economic areas across the country have been rehabilitated and are in um, good conditions. Uh, the major linkages, which um, are Lagos, Ibadan, um, uh, Kaduna, uh, Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, um, even uh, Port Harcourt, Aba, Enugu, they have all been receiving a lot of attention. So we are seeing a complete revolution in the road network of the country. Uh, apart from the 35 percent, most, you know, a lot of highways have been rehabilitated by the Buhari administration. Some inherited from previous administration and work is ongoing. Roads have been opened. What is your assessment of this development? Well, what good thing about this Buhari administration is that uh, most of these projects you are mentioning were started by um, previous administrations. Um, in previous cases, government comes and abandons projects that were started by its predecessor. But this government is particularly um, committed to completing every project that was started, even by its predecessor. And this is commendable. This is what it requires to bring out um, development in the country. Okay, talking about bridges now, let's move a little bit away from roads. You know, the local Oweto and Second Niger Bridge is almost, you know, in completion, 80% completion. And um, how much would this help these areas, you know, the zones, economically grow so that their business and make it easy for business people to, you know, travel or take goods from one point to the other? How easy will it be for Nigerians when the Second Niger Bridge is finally completed? These are very critical bridges which uh, many government in the past have been avoiding. Um, the local Iweko Iweto Bridge is very critical. It links the, um, the uh, southeastern part of the country directly to Abuja because you are coming from Cross River. You save almost uh, five hours of traveling time from that end to Abuja. This is highly commendable. And similarly, if you are going to a uh, um, state like Taraba, you find it difficult before you have to go around, around, and now, but now you go, <laughs> you travel in a very short time. This is, um, uh, it brings about uh, economic development in those areas because it boosts production. Farmers that make, uh, produce their goods find it easy to move it to the, to the market where it is demanded. Indeed. Talking about the Second Niger Bridge is highly and commendable. Um, the first Niger bridge, traveling on that bridge is a nightmare because of the number of hours you have to spend, the kind of chaos that is uh, found in the, in, in, on that bridge. But with this new development, it's going to ease off movement across the, the Niger in that end. Especially the festive season coming just around the corner, it's going to ease traffic. Yes, um, I hope it's going to be ready for the festive season, but. Um, we are seeing a very good light coming 
between travelers between this, uh, the eastern and the western region. Okay, thank you. We'll return to you, but we need to take a break now. When we return, our conversation will continue. Don't go away. recharge of the month new glow customers will get 1000 nara welcome bonus to activate buy a new glow sim today or dial star 777 hash for existing glow customers every day now christmas with the glow better get the plus plus give your kids with an energy milo active go with the goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa, helps them make the most of every day. Milo, the energy to go further. Enjoy faster connectivity and amazing discounts in the Airtel HBB seasonal offer. Get a MiFi for 9,999 Naira, plus up to 55 gigabyte data, or a router for 19,999 Naira, plus up to 160 gigabyte data. Offer valid while stock lasts. More data, more you. Reliable home broadband by Airtel, the smartphone network. There is a saying that Christmas is what you make of it. At Bed Made Furniture, we enjoy making your Christmas comfortable and exciting with the furniture we provide you. That's why from 1st November to 18 December 2021, Bed Maids offers you and your loved ones amazing luxury furniture your home loves and truly needs at up to 70% discount. You also stand a chance to win fridges, TVs, washing machines and many more as we keep making your living better through the furniture you love. Me and you, let's get to Ghana. Hey! Go and jump up. Ah! This is Ghana. You've come here to seek for greener pastures. Make it your worthwhile. Any guinea fowl you see is a guinea. Guinea fowl? Well, well, excuse guinea. me. It's just the name of the fowl. So, Ghana is a lot of Is it is it Nigerian beans? Uh, what? Have we met before? No. Jasper! Help me! Kids with an energy, Milo Active Go. With the goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa, helps them make the most of every day. Milo, the energy to go further. The Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, Aston, announces the commencement of sale of forms for the 2022 Aston Public Service Examination, PSE, for the personnel of the following organizations. Federal ministries slash parastatals, state parastatals, state civil service commissions, local government service commissions, and other interested public institutions. The year 2022 PSC shall take place simultaneously at various centers nationwide on Thursday 27th and Friday 28th of January 2022, respectively. Interested candidates are required to purchase the registration form from any of the PSE client organizations fill and affix two copies of recent passport size photograph and submit the completed form in duplicate. All registration forms for the 2022 public service examination must be submitted to the place of purchase not later than Friday 18th December 2021. For further inquiries, please contact the Secretary PSE Unit ASCON Topo Badagri, Mrs. Ivy Akpan on 0808 Double three five two four two five zero zero three five seven nine zero eight five three or visit Ascon website at www.ascon.gov.ng. Announcer Director General Ascon. You're welcome back. My guest is still in the studio, but let's take more correspondent reports. 
Man hours lost by commuters plying the east-west road may soon be over with the progress of work done at the River State section of the project. The Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs supervising the work is optimistic the project will be completed in scheduled time frame of December 2021. Robinson Daratide has details. An estimated 338 kilometers from Wari in Delta State through Kayama in Bayelsa State and Potakot in River State down to Eket in Akwaibom State was awarded in 2006 to different contractors in four sections. While some sections were completed in record time, the section between Kayama in Bayelsa State down to Potakot and Orne in River State were abandoned, giving rise to a series of protests from stakeholders. Being a regional road linking the south-south region to the west and the east with huge economic potentials to the people, particularly the refineries and seaport in River State, the federal government re-awarded the project to the contractor handling the Bayelsa and River section within June and July 2021. The bus parks in Nkpolu Junction down to Eleme were the first to be fixed, while the Choba Bridge is almost completed with the construction of drainages and medians ongoing at the Potakot section. With now self, at least the journey now is even more easier for us than when the road was, was bad. So we are happy now if they can quickly finish the road. The Bayasa has this and the Elele has this. So we have many ports there. So they are supposed to help us and fill all those places so that we can we, the will limit some accident or, or for us. Work may resume at Ahuda to Bayasa section early next year as the contractor is expected to round up the ongoing portacle section this year. The rain affects us more but the work is moving on. In December, we are moving down to Bayasa and Biyama as is. By 2022, December, we want to complete the road. In Portacot, Robinson, Delateide, NTA News. And from Kaduna, Amina Saidu Abubakar brings us up to speed with the progress of reconstruction of Abuja Kaduna Kano Highway and how it is expected to enhance economic activities between the south and north, as well as international trade linking the coastal ports and neighboring sub Saharan countries. It was a nightmare flying Kano Kaduna Abuja Highway. Now the story has changed. Section one of the project Abuja to Kaduna is 12.5% completed, while Section 2, Kaduna Zaria, is 23.81%. By December, about 70 kilometers will be open for road traffic. So we are working on schedule. The weather is friendly. The contractor has, has been paid. So everything is working well. And uh, we believe that all this being called, we, are, we, are, we are achieve what we have planned to achieve in good time. Section 3 of the project covering 137 kilometer is translating the commitment of the present administration to the delight of motorists. We are very happy. Let the contractor speed up. Truly, the work is good. The portion of Hura Garo Malam is making steady progress with construction of culverts, mining, and laying of stone base. The contractor has um, more or less doubled the amount of resources that they have in place. But as we speak, there are two teams working. The team is working from the Zari end towards Kano, while there's a second team is working from the Kano end towards Zari. It will generally affect the productivity of the country and to lead to lots and lots of transformation, especially in the aspect of job creation. The reconstruction is expected to enhance economic activities between the south and northern parts of the country. In Kaduna, Amina Saida Abubakar, NTA News. My guest is still in the studio. He is the Director General Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology, Zaria Bayaru Sali Farah. Thank you for still staying with Thank us. Thank you very much. Let's talk about the road networks. Government is trying. Everybody knows that the federal government is out there doing the best it can. But experts are saying that a legal policy framework, you know, for private sector initiative into the road network in Nigeria would go a long way in lessening the burden of responsibility on the federal government. What's your view on that? Yes, um, I totally agree with what the experts are saying. Um, sometime in September, the Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology hosted a conference 
on the issues of funding transport infrastructure in Nigeria. We are expert were invited to provide um, solutions. And um, the general view is that government cannot do it alone because um, there are other competing needs which the government have to meet. So we need resources from elsewhere to support the development of the transport infrastructure, particularly the road transport sector. And there are various options which can be explored where um, expert um, financiers can come in and invest in the development of road transport infrastructure. If we look at road building, transport operation as a business, then it's worth doing it. Okay, now your, 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 your institute is of transportation technology. What do you have on the table, you know, to sort of enhance, you know, transportation network in Nigeria? I'm sure if the goods are road, the cars would have a problem. Yes, the fact is that um, our key mandate are to uh, train the personnel that work and operate the systems. And so far, so good, we have trained a lot of people in the industry that are manning key positions in various um, sectors of the transport industry in the moment. It's not just enough to invest and provide the infrastructure, you need people who can run and manage the systems. And that is our key responsibility. Okay, most of these um, projects, federal government projects, have a timeline of 2021, 2022. What is your assessment on the, you know, the, the, the project, the work that is going out there on the federal roads? How do you assess it, good or bad? It's excellent. From what we have seen and what we are seeing is the government is uh, um, poised to deliver on its um, timelines. And how would you good, a good road network, you know, influence and impact the AFTA agreement, African Free Trade Agreement, and enhance transportation of goods and services yes, to other um, countries? Incidentally, we are having a conference on Monday and Tuesday on what role the transport system in Nigeria can play to facilitate the, um, the success of African Free Trade Agreement in this country. Uh, we have invited experts across the world to come and share with us their experience on what the Nigerian transport system needs to be to facilitate the actualization of the goals of the African Free Trade um, Agreement. Mm. We all know Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. We have over 200 million people. We have vast resources. So um, we cannot make very good use of these opportunities unless we have an effective and efficient transportation system. That is when we'll be able to explore the advantages that we have as a country. Okay. Completion of these projects feasible by 2022? Briefly? Yes. Um, from the reports on ground, most of them are targeted at 2022. And uh, many of them seem to be on course. Okay. Yes. Director General, Nigeria Institute of Transport Technology, Zaria Bayero Salifa. Thank you so much for joining us on Weekend Fire. Thank you very we much. appreciate your time. I appreciate that. Part, yeah. We'll take a break right now. When we return, more will come your way. Don't go away. COVID-19 hesitancy, status and deadline. That's our focus on NTA Tuesday Live next week. Join us every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Tuesday Live. Incisive and educative. Did you hear the super exciting news? What have you heard? Go TV is going super. Are you serious? Bringing new channels with super awesome novellas, super duper kid shows, All right. and super slamming WWE 24-7. At the super cool price of 5,500 naira. Good. Get Go TV's brand new package. Go TV Super. That's one and a half years or so since the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen massive changes in the way we uh, do things at NPH CDA. Uh, working with the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, we were able uh, to actually roll out in the first couple of weeks a massive a community-based uh, program that looked uh, at how we could quickly mitigate the impacts of uh, COVID-19 in the communities. So we rolled out 
a training that involved over 220,000 uh, primary health care workers all across Nigeria. We are saying how we've been able to now uh, achieve uh, pre-COVID levels in terms of uh, the routine immunization services. That is really, really impressive. And really, my, my heart goes out to all of the primary health care workers. They've done such an amazing job, uh, along, of course, with all of the health workers that have been in the front line. Yeah, welcome back to Weekend Fire. Let's join Gift George on Spots Update. Nigeria's D Tigers kept hope alive at the ongoing FIBA Africa World Cup qualifiers in Angola. The D Tigers beat its Malian counterpart 72 70 in the second match on Saturday evening. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Dari says Nigerian undergraduates should see the next Nuga Games to be hosted by Unilag as launch part to fame in continental and international sports competitions. He commended the level of preparation for the event by the host university, noting that the innovation being introduced to the games would produce athletes that would give Nigeria medals in world-class competitions. History of Nuga Games is being recast tonight for the 21st century sports development in our country. It's to create awareness, one, for our students, two, for the community, Three for the nation. Super Falcons Patricia George, who joined the team after injury signed line half for some time, has expressed hope that with the level of preparation and the team spirit in camp, the national female team will beat their next opponent. We're heading in the right direction. Coach Randy is doing a good job of preparing us and making sure that we're going to come out strong. Similarly, Nigeria's amputee football team, the Special Eagles, left the country early hours of Saturday for Tanzania to take part at the 2021 Amputee Football Nations Cup, which commences this weekend. The Nigerian side has been drawn in Group D alongside Ghana and Egypt. This very championship, it's a qualifying to the World Cup, right? And we know more people, more amputated people will come into amputee football in African football. Nigeria's representative in the CAF Confederations Cup, Rivers United, will on Sunday take on Al Masari of Egypt in one of the playoffs encounter at the Ayimba International Stadium, Abba. The match is scheduled for 4 p.m. Nigerian time. Sports journalists in Lagos State will vie for honors in this year's Swan Cup competition. Chairman of the state chapter of Swan explained that football, table tennis, and scrabble are some of the games that will be organized while Governor Babaji de Sonwolu and some past chairman will be honored at the gala night. Swan Cup is the most important uh, program on, in our calendar. With sports update, Gift George, NTA News. Sympathizers from across the country have continued to troop to Gombe to sympathize with the family of Justice Adamujauro over the demise of his mother. Emmanuel Akile reports that latest among the sympathizers is the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad. Sympathizers, including Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, other justices of the Supreme Court, relations from within and outside Gombe State, among others, have been visiting the family of Justice Adamu Jauru to condole them. Once you have gone, you have left behind people that are responsible, respected, gentle, who will take care of whatever you have left behind. Then you have not missed anything because they will carry on, carry on with whatever you have left. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rest her in peace and we pray that those that came to commiserate with us will go back safely to their various destinations. Late Hajia Khadija too died at the age of 96 years, leaving behind many children and grandchildren. Among them is Justice Adamu Joru, Justice of the Supreme Court in Gombe. Emmanuel Akila, NTA News. And that is Weekend File. Before we go, don't forget to join NTA in the fight against rape and rapists. And of course, get yourself vaccinated. I am Jumba Yusuf. Good night.